Hello and welcome to D&D Alternate Timelines Part 4. I am here with a new character, Dawn Star. I'm here with Claire. What up? We might even do a little chuck today. So, uh, one of our players is currently trying to figure out their password as well. A new player. Starting, uh, with you, baby. You are... If we look at the... We just gotta go up and look at stuff real quick. Oh, what am I doing? I can just resend it to all of you. I don't know why I just did that. Sorry about that, guys. Here's a montage of all the areas. Oh, fucking editing the photo, asshole. It won't let me... It won't let me send Mexico. That's fucked. Racist. That's fucked. That is so messed up. Uh, give me a second. I know it's in the group. I sent it before, so I'll send it again. Here we go. It's literally right here. There's Mexico. Again, I don't know why it does it like that, but... There we go. Alright, so... Babe, you are currently going to be trading with an avatar Kyoshi. Kyoshi in the spirit world in the middle of Oregon, up where Washington is. This is where you were located with the monks. So, you're going. Kyoshi's going to start a fight scene and go, I need to draw. The first step is drawing it out. The second step is breathing. Until you learn that, you'll never control the avatar state. So you're pretty much going to try and kill me? She's going to say the fight begins now, and she's going to go into her avatar state and start throwing huge rocks all at you. You're in a spirit world fucking platform as far as you see it's like fucking jack sparrow when he got fucking sucked into fucking davy jones locker and it was nothing but a sand place except no ship just sand everywhere okay i'm obviously going to try and uh dodge them by running away mixed with bending them away Okay. I need my dice. You wanna? Yeah. They are not in here, so they gotta be over here somewhere. Try to bend. D20. Do you have dice? Yeah, D20. Alright, go ahead and roll. Oh, I can't roll in the book. That never works. I gotta roll on the top of this thing. There we go. 
I got a seven. All right. She's going to start throwing boulders at you. One of them's going to hit you as you try to get away. And you're going to freak out. And that's what's going on right now. You know, you're flying in midair right now. Okay. We'll say you hit the ground, you're hurt, you're getting up like, ah, fuck. She tells you things are as painful here as they are in the actual world. No shit, I can feel that. Is there a better way to do this without trying to kill me? She smiles and she creates a volcano behind you and it starts to erupt you're a dick i'm going to uh what what's the setting like forest you are desert. We're talking Jack Sparrow in the fucking area, but except there ain't no water around. It's all sand. Is there except now, around? now there's a bunch. No, this is the spirit world. There's just sand, and now there's a giant volcano behind you that she has created. A spirit tornado, obviously. Volcano. It would it would be like the ghost of a tornado, but the stuff still hurts you. You still said volcano the first time. Yeah. You keep saying tornado. Oh, volcano, that's what I meant. Okay. Do we have any ketchup? Is there any ketchup on the burgers? Ranch? You said it's out there somewhere. Oh. But anyway, continue. It is full blown erupting, like no fucking games. I'm going to use my air bending to push myself as far away from the volcano as possible. Okay, go ahead and roll. D20. Ooh, 17. Sorry, baby. <laughs> so, you are going to airbend, and it's going to shoot you up in the air instead, and now you're falling. I'm going to make a ball of air. Okay, go ahead and roll. I'm going to attempt to. Fucking eight. I got a two, so... You fall on a ball of air. And I'm gonna ride my ass the fuck away from that volcano. Alright, you're away from the volcano. You're on the other side of the volcano. And she goes, where are you going? And starts to airbend your current towards her. And you are now airbending on a ball that is coming towards her. Well, obviously I'm gonna jump the fuck off the ball. Okay. And tell her I'm trying to get away from her crazy ass that's trying to kill me. And she's going to say, do you want to control the Avatar state or not? And she's going to start... That should not be part of the equation of that. The volcano is going to... She's going to start going, ha ha. And the volcano is going to start shooting spike, rock spikes out of the side of it at you. We'll say eight. Why are you always trying to fucking kill people? Okay, um... I'm going to try to redirect the spikes towards her. Okay, that's a good one. Roll for it. Nine. Ooh, eleven. Don't so, I have to roll for each one? No. You tried to go after all of them. And ended up getting none of them. And we're going to say that they hit, as they go to hit you, 
no, we'll say five miss and three are direct hits that do not pierce you but leave hard enough bruises that it sends you into a shock sending you into the avatar state okay now what I, I can't control the avatar state like at all based on your rolls we all saw how that went last time uh huh so you're flying around in a ball of wind, fire, water, earth. and... Yeah, earth. It's what now? It's just flying everywhere. If it goes based off of how it was... in the real world. Because shit just flew with fucking everywhere. Alright. Pretty sure you turned the ground to molten lava in the real world. Yeah, you did. Huh? Good times. For you. For you. It's your story. I'm gonna just start chucking everything at her. Okay. So, go ahead and roll. Oh, I rolled really low. Yeah. Like you gotta really fuck up to fuck this one up, babe. Eight. Five. <laughs> like I said, you'd have to really fuck up to roll lower than me. Alright, so... You're gonna start ripping up slabs, like... The ground under you in sheets. Like sheet metal, like fucking giant rectangles. One in each hand, just rippling in waves as you're pulling them up. To try to attack her, she's going to jump in the air and she's going to float there and go, You gotta do better than that. But that's I'm good. I'm gonna start throwing fire at her arrogant ass. Alright, go ahead and roll. Yeah. Oh wow, I only got a nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're shooting fireballs and you hit her. She falls from the sky, hits the ground, and goes, Now I'm angry. I don't want to hear you're angry. I'm gonna start shooting lightning lightning at her. That is a thing firebenders can do. Yes it is. Okay, roll for it. Nineteen. I only got a seven. Uh so you start shooting lightning at her, she's dodging left, right, left, right, because she's a Kyoshi warrior. And the Avatar. And the Avatar, yep. And she is going to be like, now watch me do it better. And she's going to spin a fucking lightning around until it makes a tornado and you're in the middle of it. A tornado of what? Of lightning. She took your tornado and turned it into a lightning tornado. I didn't make a tornado. You shot lightning at her. She, she caught turned it, it into a tornado. and turned it into a tornado of lightning by swimming it around and around and around. You gotta think you're both in the avatar state. You could do almost anything. It's crazy. Sorta. What there are limits, but she's pushing. Alright. I'm gonna try and redirect all of that lightning back at her in one foul swoop. Go ahead and roll. Oh god, that didn't work. I don't even need to know what you got. It didn't work. I rolled a 19. I rolled one. Uh oh. It definitely did not work. Well, not only did it not work, you are consumed in lightning and pass out. Yeah, and that, once that you pass out in the right. spirit world, you wake up in the real world 
and you're gonna wake up super exhausted, and, and it's pets. nighttime, and it is now nighttime, and you can't use any powers to get back to the spirit world currently, because again, you are fucking beat. I'm exhausted. Yeah, you're really exhausted, because you were using powers to be there in general. Well, you don't use power to get to the spirit world. Your astral projection helps you. You use it so that you can stay as long as you want and be anywhere you want. But I'm just dead out in the world. Alright. You here, Becca? She joined the party. Yeah, thought she did. She said she was here too. But all right, yeah, yeah. We're gonna start with Dawnstar. You're falling out of a portal, me guy, and you are in a river, flowing down the river. It's a rapid river. Like, you fell out of a portal, you're slammed right into this fucking river. Boom! And it's taking you flying down that river now. He ain't floating down a river. He's... He's a moving. Yeah. Not floating. Right, you're moving. Look at your character. What do you do? This is a life or death situation. How are you getting out? Okay. Roll a d20. Or no, that would be a d10. And what? what's his intelligence stat? I think it was pretty decent. Oh, it was a one. Oh. <laughs> He's a dumbass, right? Yeah. So that you find no branches, my dude. <laughs> Anything that requires intelligence, just don't even fucking worry about it. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna say, uh... So let's see. I know I sent him his character sheet. I'm gonna resend it so you can freshly see it. Uh, there's Becca's right there. I'm gonna resend that. <laughs> the remote's being stupid. What? I love that. That's my kid right there. Okay, well, you have to watch something else then. Well, then go find what you want. You're smart, you got this. Jabroni. You don't need help. No, you don't. You know how to do it. Get your fingers out your nose, it's disgusting. Go in there, look at the remote, and think about how Mimi and Daddy told you to do it. Okay? Thank you. I was about to say, I just realized I could look through characters like this. That one's Clementine, that's Becca's. That's Jabroni. What? There's Dawnstar. What about a female? Alright, Dawnstar, you have kinetic control, kinetic charge, shadows, creature control, creature creation. And you have the revive, revive fruit. Oh god, he can't even be in the water. He can't swim. Ha! <laughs> Okay, so you are in the middle of the river, drowning. He oh, forgot, forgot that you had the re revive, revive fruit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that could work. We'll say he tries to summon a shadow turtle and a little, like, shadow arm branch comes off a tree and grabs onto him, stops him from going anywhere 
Coraline Snow, I will take that TV away from you. And pulls him to shore. What are you doing, buddy? They just pulled you to shore. You just got pulled to shore. You're probably puking up a little bit of water. Okay. You're going to search and find that the squirrel is a little strange. You're going to realize that as you are looking around, everybody are animals. And some of them can do the most extraordinary things. Okay, a blue guy comes walking up to you. And he goes, wow, I've never seen you here before. Hey, Knuckles, come over here real quick. <laughs> Knuckles is going to come over and be like, what do you want? And we'll say this is uh, Sonic's little brother. Because again, Sonic is gone. And he's going to say, look, we found another straggler. And Knuckles is going to say, no, 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 no. Last time I got involved with a struggler, uh, son, yo daddy went missing. Yeah, that, that, was, that was my bad. Yeah, his dick ass sent me to fucking Sonic's world where I got kidnapped. He's going to go, okay, I guess, we'll help. Depending on what you need. What do you mean by just passing through? He's going to say, well, you're here in Emerald Fields. If you go over there, it's the Marble Zone. Technically, this is the Green Hill Zone. Yeah, that's where you are right now. He's like, that's our little city, our little area. We'll put something on later, okay? No, she needs to figure it out herself. She's been showed 15 times. Babe, can you just help her so we'll be done with her? She won't be doing this stuff. She knows how to do it. She is being lazy, and we're letting her be lazy. Alright. Um, there was a girl here, and Sonic offered to help her. We were all going to help, and, uh, well, my dad really, I don't, I just heard the story from Knuckles. Go to bed. Knuckles is going to look at you and go, look, you're not going to believe me if I told you. He's going to say, well, I guess, have you, so you're saying you've seen somebody deteriorate before? I watched him slowly dissipate before my eyes. I can take you to where he disappeared. All right, we're going to say. Yeah, 
we'll say he grabs you, uh, Knuckles and them, and they take you over there. Uh, we'll say it takes another month. Uh, we'll say about a month you guys are just traveling and stuff until he finally comes upon something, you know, you guys are camping out and doing stuff, hanging out. Uh, and your quest is to get to this area at the moment. Is there anything you guys are doing in the middle of that? Like anything you want to talk specifically about? Anything. Okay, and he's going to ask what kind of price are you looking for here? The only thing we have gold here are these rings. They take you to wherever you want to go by just thinking about it. Very useful. They're going to throw a ring. And... You're gonna st they're gonna go through it, bring you through it, the ring's gonna disappear, and they're gonna be like, we're here. Instead of taking a month, I guess we could just do the journey here in a few days. And they bring you over to... Uh, they bring you over to a pond, and they go, the person who was here before could do the most extraordinary things. They made this pond. Something like that. And Knuckles is going to point out a bunch of trees missing and crater holes where he's like, that's where I got hit and that's where Tails got hit. We were attacked by Dr. Robotnik. Um, he's evil, he wants to take over the world, and he's got large agendas. We're trying to figure out what they are. He's going to say right there in front of me, he took the hit for me and he started disappearing. And then when I got hit with it, I flew away. I don't understand. Why did he disappear and I not? It doesn't make any sense. He explains the entire Sonic story to you. Yes. Well, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to find him? Well, to, to be honest, I think the fastest way, well, the person who was here before started doing things in the sky, making loud noise, and eventually he showed up. Maybe we could do that. The straggler who was here before you. 
They made water shoot up in the air and Sonic hit it and turned it into water rockets. Fireworks, they were really cool. So, we'll say, looking at your guy, I can't wait till Jabroni starts playing. Um, you have kinetic charge. You could have shadows. You could create a creature. Uh, we're gonna say that you create a shadow wolf that howls very loud, and it attracts Doctor Robotnik exactly like you wanted it to. And he shows up and goes, "Well, well." Back for round two, are we? Yes, they are pests, aren't they? Fuck, oh, I didn't like them either, but I didn't call them pests. Oh, that kid. He looks just like that hedgehog that I took. He's long gone. To be honest, I don't know yet. I haven't studied that far. It was more of an experiment that just happened to work. He's gonna start shooting blasters mad. Immediately hit Knuckles. Knuckles is going to fly back, hitting the sun, and it's going to cut through a bunch of rows of trees before it finally stops, knocking them both out. And he's going to go, this is our fight, right? My little toys. He's gonna shoot you with. He's gonna shoot you with a beam that is going to engulf you in. Like, uh. Like silicone ish, breathable material, though. And like a box that's impenetrable and you have no powers inside. He's going to shrink you down and put you inside a candle. A little old candle thing. You're like Tinkerbell size. And he's going to take you back to his lair. You can try, but your intelligence is very low. You're stupid. That's <laughs> It's your character, my dude. Your character? No, your roles gave him the stats. It did. But again, hey, that's cool. Uh, you just play your character, you know? It's not really you, it's somebody else. So we're gonna say now, uh... You pass out because of going from big to little takes lots of energy from you and you are currently passed out on your way to Dr. Giroux's lab where you wake up and we'll say it's been a few weeks uh, he had been doing tests on you and you are now in a Rancor pit area 
A door is opening and five T-Rexes are coming out. Okay. You have made it dark. No one can see you. The walls are all dirt and impossible to climb. Okay, you're gonna see that it is a round area and just an air a door where they came in from the t-rexes at this point two t-rexes are upon you they have smelled you yes it is he's gonna walk you're gonna walk in the door all the T-Rexes are out by now. And the door's gonna shut. And... Okay, um... The wall's gonna open up on the side a little bit into like a futuristic TV where Dr. Robotnik's going to be like, welcome, I have you exactly where I want you. Hmm. Your simple rebuttals are not going to get you out of this, Mr. Dawnstar. Says a man from the shadows behind Dr. Robotnik. The man from the shadows is going to step forward. And he's going to say, do you know who I am? Well, I'm a good scientist. I was a good paper boy. Until Parker ruined it all. And I'll make him pay, and I'll make all of you pay. You're gonna work for us. Or you're gonna... Or you're gonna die. All right, they're going to laugh. And the scientist is going to have Venom consume him. Around him. And he's going to go, why don't you just try it? And Venom's going to say, should I eat this guy, Mr. Robotnik? And he's going to say, not yet. We might be able to use him. Just like we used that pathetic blue speed creature. Oh, yes. <laughs> PJ's like, damn. Um, no, he gave me everything I ever wanted. Because I can. And because he caused me so much pain.
continuing with the mist with the rebuttals. And they're not even that funny. Could I dispose of him? Well, uh, says Venom. And Robotnik's gonna say, you know what? Screw it. We'll let the hedgehog do it. A door's gonna open above you, and a, he a hedgehog's gonna fall down. And you see that it is Sonic with red eyes. going to uh, sorry to take my medicine he's gonna leap out immediately hit you you're gonna fly hitting the wall and he's gonna have his hand on your neck going, Mr. Robotnik, should I kill him slow, or should I take my time? Or should I kill him quick, or should I take my time? And he's gonna say, go ahead. Take your time. Show him how OP your power is compared to his. Okay. You throw your shadow ball, it sucks Sonic in. And he goes, whoa, what the hell is this? Huh. You think these little party tricks are going to work with me? He's going to start spinning rapidly and break the sh the ball. He goes, bring it on. He's gonna just put his hand on his head and go, ah, ah, and he's gonna move left and right. He'll be like, you're, you're lying to me. That was a story I was told. Oh shit. Sonic's gonna run up, grab the ring, and throw it. Run through it and disappear. And the ring's gonna disappear. Robotnik's gonna come up on the screen and go, I don't know what the hell you just did. But I'll have him back in no time. They're gonna smash a button. Ugh. They're gonna pull a button out in front of you, basically. And be like, once I hit this button, you'll be gone forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. And he hits the button. A portal opens up and sucks you in.
to be dated. All right, back off. A portal is going to open up. And you are going to land in a hole in someone's yard. A hole in someone's yard. A woman with black hair is going to come out for reeking out on you. And she, she's going to go, hey. Oh, no, you can get up out of it. Like, you just get up and you're like, whoa, what? Like a body size hole. You get up and you're like, what the fuck? You made a indent in the ground. Trying to say. And she's going to say, not another one. That was supposed to be cleaned up by that young man before he left with Lord Burris. But I guess that means you're going to have to do it. Or you can get fucked. I mean, there's always that. Alright, by the time you're done cleaning it up, it's nighttime and a ship is appearing next to the house, like slowly landing. Alright. The woman's gonna walk up and say, The name's Chi Chi, thanks for doing the hole in. To be honest, I'd be more freaked out, but. And the way you came out of that portal, it seems as if you were one of those, like those other two guys that I'd met a few months back. In fact, one of them's just landed. The ship's going to open up at this point, and one of them's going to come out and go, Hey, my name's Goku, and I'm from Earth. Hey! You must be that lady Chi Chi was talking about who fell from the portal, huh? Hey Chuck, do you know this guy? Or do you know this girl? I've never seen that girl in my life. She does look semi-familiar. And behind Chuck comes Vegeta. He's gonna go Kakarot. Of course you would find another fool. I mean, in Goku's defense, he didn't technically find. <laughs> Chi Chi's gonna go, come on, stop being so rude. And Bulma's gonna come up out of the house and be like, yeah. Come on, Vegeta. Why don't you get in here? You've been training a lot, and I miss you. Vegeta's gonna grovel a little bit and. And then he, yeah, he he basically leaves and goes over there and goes, well, don't leave. Because I want to train. He's going to walk in the story. house and shut the door. Goku's going to go, yeah, he's just mad because he can't ever pass me. I keep telling him to let it go. Stop trying to be the best and you'll be the best. Goku's going to be like, so do you want to stay for dinner? Do you have anywhere special you got to be? I'm going to be very curious. Uh, Chuck is going to just keep casually quiet and not open his eyes and just keep walking forward. You notice he never opens his eyes all the way through to the door and only opens them when he goes to speak at the dinner table. That's weird. 
All right. After dinner, uh, we you sleep there. Chuck sleeps there. Vegeta, Goku, Bulma, everyone stay in the night, and you wake up to loud shockwaves crashing. And you're gonna hear Chi Chi yelling, dang training, always so loud, and you're gonna see Vegeta and Goku outside fighting. And I'm just, and uh, Chuck is just standing there with his eyes closed. Yes, you can, and he's going to reply because I have been, I've surpassed needing to see. I can now set. That works. If he's gonna go with a little bit of training, maybe you could too. I'm actually here trying to find my buddy. His name's Lord Stoney. We'll say we keep talking, we talk about our past, how you and me, uh, we keep tracing each other's steps back, basically, to, oh, well, I was through a portal and I fell and I was here. Well, same. Where were you, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was in the science lab with Sobos. Oh, that's where you're familiar, kind of thing. Very dramatic music. Mm-hmm. So Vegeta and Goku are going to train for a little bit in just base form. And they're going to come up. After training, we'll say three, four hours of us watching them train. And they're going to say, to be honest, I heard your friend went to Lord Beerus' place. Let's go check it out. And Bulma's going to say, yeah, actually, Whis comes here and picks people up all the time to go check out little training fights he has going on in his world and I'm going to look at you and go you want to come this is your chance because what else did you say I'm going to tell you to follow me and we're going to walk up, and he's, I'm going to ask if you want anything to eat. You might as well grab it right now. To be honest, it's a lot of pudding. And Weiss is going to turn around and go, but just remember, don't eat it all, or Lord Beerus will get mad. All right, we're going to head to... Uh, he's going to... Do this weird ball thing like he did in the tournament of how where he transported tons of people. And he's going to transport us, Goku, Vegeta, and we're going to be right by the Stan's Arena area. At this point, I'm going to walk away and go find a spot to sit down. Check out the next match, which is Krillin and Cybermen. Yeah, if you want to do that, you're going to start doing that. I'm going to look over from my seat and be like, wow, that's cool. How long have you been able to do that? Why don't you come sit over here and tell me about it? Alright, you and I are going to talk and watch Curlin's match. 
He's going to drag it on, of course, for an hour or two. Um, we'll say we go through a few more matches after that, just talking, you know. And eventually a match comes where I go, hey, that's him. That's Tony. Look, he's fighting Piccolo. And in the middle of the match, you're going to hear, fuck this guy. He fucking sucks. You can get him, Piccolo. And it's Krillin throwing a cabbage with Yamcha and Tien. Suddenly, Yamcha's everybody, about not everybody, but a bunch of people are throwing cabbages. I am going to throw a cabbage myself. For some reason, they have a hate bar for him. You're going to watch as the match continues, him slipping on stuff, on all the cabbages and stuff that are around. He's freaking out. He's like, what the fuck, dude? What's with all these cabbages coming after me? He's thinking his own thing. Uh, just as he's, you know, getting back up, he hears cannon. And luckily he dodges. Just... And Dodging by throwing himself in the air. Hello. What's up, Cam? Uh, we'll say he was able to dodge the first one. And as he hits the ground, the first one that is still going, and he just moves his fingers over and it hits him. And as it hits him, a giant explosion, and all that's left standing is Piccolo. And they're dragging Stony off. They're, well, they left him there for the night. We'll say that, you know, we watched a bunch more matches while he was sleeping in the corner of the arena. And then, you know, they woke him up, brought him in there. And we're going to go talk to him. Unfortunately, until Stoney gets in here, we can't have that conversation. But we are on our way now to go talk to Stoney with Lord Beerus and Whis and Goku and Vegeta. The real ones, not the fake ones that he's been fighting. And on our way, we'll say that Beerus goes, that's funny. I feel I sense some hidden power inside you. And he's looking right at you. He goes, are you sure you haven't trained? I'll go, huh? Well, I guess we'll have to find out. Are you joining my training grounds? I'm going to join as well. And he's going to go, huh, your guys' gaps in power? You're not training. Not together. And I'm going to go, okay. We don't know. And you're going to... We're going to laugh. I'm going to laugh. Weiss is going to laugh. We're going to walk up and see Stoney passed out in his bed. And he's going to go, oh, well, Beerus is going to be like, well, we'll have to come back and talk to him in the morning. And they're going to head to their rooms. I'm going to head to my rooms and we're going to all pass out. Now, babe. Yes. Let's say all that happened in about a month. Worth the time, you know, the traveling, the, you know, falling through the portal, back uh, and me doing the dinner and the them training, you know, taking us there. Just say it takes a little while to get there. We'll use the ship instead of, uh, getting a ride from uh, Weiss. So the question is, will Babe ever be able to control the Avatar state? Will Stoney ever wake up and be questioned by Purus and the gang?
And Will Dawnstar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Will Dawnstar. Find out what happens next. Find out next in the episode of Dragon Ball D&D.